Yeah, g'day and welcome back. I've been working on bringing this beautiful Shoblin lathe from 1983 or so back to life, back into service. Now I'm not sure how many times I've said that, you know, the next thing I need to do is pull out this motor out of its compartment and clean everything off. As you can see, I've so far managed to resist the temptation and basically procrastinate on that. I don't know how many times I've started this job, or at least intended to start this job. Pull this motor, get it all cleaned up. That whole cleaning the motor thing, yeah, it's not a terribly attractive job, huh? I guess these are the end stops for the variator. Now this motor, and especially its cast iron housing, plus the big back gear sitting above it, is a really heavy unit. I'm guessing it's probably 150 kilos, just as a rough estimate. I didn't really have a good plan of how I was going to get that out, but I was talking to another owner of a 125 CNC, and he suggested, since I've got a motor crane, just make up a C-frame that goes in and lifts from this surface. Better crank up the welder. Yeah, I'm going to need to raid my scrap bin and find the parts that can make something that lifts up through here. And... What? Whoa! All right! Yesterday. Yeah, so here we are at Harold, and he's got pretty much the same lathe that I've got. This one's basically identical. The only difference being that his has already got a half-finished conversion to a Cinemeric. With a modern CNC lathe, instead of the variata from a dumb three-phase motor and then a back gear, it's just got a massive 7.5 kilowatt servo on it, and you run the main spindle as a servo drive axis. As with mine, the condition of his is absolutely awesome. When the ways have got no obvious damage to them, the spindle looks in perfect condition. And he's selling this, so hey, if anyone's interested, get on Wilhaben, look for Schaublin, you'll find this. Come and make uh, Harold an offer, huh? I'm going to buy the tail stock, so I really appreciate that he's selling that to me, because it's difficult to come by. Nice job. <laughs> Fantastic. Now this is a mini lathe tailstock. It weighs bugger all. Whereas this, this is a Bolly 4L tailstock. It's got a bit more meat on the bones. Probably weighs maybe, I don't know, 10 kilograms or so. 22 pounds. But this, this beast, this is a Shelblin tailstock. It's enormous. When you consider that the Bolly is really not much smaller than the 125, this is pretty amazingly rigid. I'm guessing it weighs maybe 30 kilograms or so. So if any of you are wondering where Shelblin got its reputation for awesome, incredibly high precision lathes, this is a good indication, huh? When Harold generously offered to sell me this at a very reasonable price, I certainly wasn't going to quibble about it. So I haven't actually taken a good look at it yet. Let's see what it looks like underneath. All right. Yeah, that looks like it's got no wear on it at all. That looks fantastic. Judging by the scraping marks on this front way, it looks, looks like it's barely been moved back and forth on a bed of a lathe. And the rear way looks similar. Now it's starting to look a bit more like a lathe. Yeah, it certainly looks in lovely condition. 
nothing obviously wrong with them. Harold said to me that this number three Morse arbor might be bent, but he just put it in here just to keep the Morse taper internally from getting rusty, so appreciate that. It looks like it's never done any work in its life, which is also what our number one fan, Nico, says about me. The following day. Yeah, then coming up here. Right, so this pipe will go on here. Cut it off across here, chop this one this way, and then put a lifting lug about here. That should do it. So there's the mock-up. I found this bit of bean rebar. So I guess I'll make a lifting hook out of that. Poke a couple of holes through here for it to mount. My miscellaneous drills include a lot of imperial sizes that my dad gave me, which is quite handy here because I need about sort of 10 and a half millimeters. No gloves with spinning spindles. Kind of looks like a rusty bike lock. Damn, it looks like my little angle grind is still at my daughter's place. Oh well, this will do. Now if you're the sensitive type with a low threshold for bad maintenance, this is probably a good time to go out and get a coffee break or something. 30 year old bike, the threads on the crankshaft, they're worn out, so a couple of times when this has been ridden, that nut's come loose and the pedal's fallen off. I mean obviously I could buy a new everything, but ah, it's just not worth it. They don't let us do this sort of maintenance on aircraft. Funny that. Now that was ugly. First weld of the day is always an ugly one, so it's important that that's on the bottom where no one sees it. I'm gonna guess that a real welder would have recommended welding that from this end to there, but. It always impresses me when people can do a rosette weld, because I sure can.
melt, melt this. Well, this might be the best weld of the day, so we better celebrate it. Bit of an undercut. Well, I patched up that hole, so next I can start putting the gussets on. I blew a hole in here, so I have to plug that. Here I've got a thinner wall tube joining a thicker wall tube and I've got a bit of a gap so I'm not going to just blast across that, I'll definitely burn holes. I'll just do a little stitch draw. I need to move this forward now to get to the rear mount bolt, engine mount bolt. There's only one more motor mount screw that I have to pull and then after that I probably just have to disconnect a couple more cables and we can pull this motor out. Alright, let's get this motor out. This crane belongs to our channel's number one fan, Nico.
This kind of car motor crane is really not that useful for moving machinery. It's supposed to go between the wheels of a car, so it's quite narrow. Whereas with a machine, you really want it wider. You've quite a few people on the internet have chopped the frame down and widened it if they use it for moving machines. Because in this case, I'm only lifting a couple of hundred kilos, I can extend the boom. Five minutes later. Hey Harold, if you're watching, your idea of making up a C-frame for this was an excellent idea. It only took me probably, what, two or three hours and made this job way easier than it otherwise would have been. So thanks for the tip. And once again, thanks very much for selling me that uh, tailstock. I really appreciate that. Now we can see it a bit better. Big three-phase motor, variable speed drive through a mechanical variator. And then a back gear in module, which is either 1 to 1 or 6.5 to 1. You can see why I wanted to get this motor out. It's just a big cleaning job, basically. Everything's pretty gunged up. Pool of water under where the motor lives. And yeah, I'll just do a big clean up. With that motor out, I think I'm done for this week. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel. If you like what you see, please leave a comment. Like the feedback you guys give me. I've learned a lot from you all. So once again, thanks very much.